before I start, makeup struggles. Thank you so much for the shout out. It was, it was, I mean, I didn't even expect it. It was, it's insane. I just saw the comments under my latest video. And they're like, makeup struggles sent me here. I was like, what? Thank you, sis. Much appreciated shout out. I mean, and the video itself, I'm definitely going to check out all the channels she suggested to visit on her video is current black beauty channels to watch and it actually motivates me to do the same just to take time to spread the love and yes yeah, she makes it so that it's about the black beauty channels because again being pro-black as she said does not mean being anti anything we're definitely trying to strengthen our community and to show that we can make it happen too and it's outrageously inspirational for her to carve out the time and just spread some love to widen our community and just to share uh, the love with everyone else because there's one thing i learned in 2018 is that there is enough for everyone and we don't have to feel the need to to be selfish or be like i don't want to like no like it's it's okay to recommend someone else or say hey i checked this channel out too because again there are so many people on this planet youtube is a huge platform and there is enough viewage enough time for everyone so that no matter how many channels get on here because i know it feels oversaturated i get it there's still enough we're gonna all gonna be okay and i'm not sure if i'm gonna post this today that'll be a miracle it is new year's day happy new year friends thank you so much for everything i cannot wait for us to rise and thrive in 2019 and again thank you makeup struggles for the shadow if you haven't checked out makeup struggles i will post her link down below in my description box what i would do better with this palette or what i would like to see from this brand she gets into those like nuanced questions and and things that people don't necessarily address all the time it's a different perspective to take that i feel shakes it up up and just adds more for you to watch so by the by the thumbnail you already know and i'm not gonna make this a favorite wayne goss and sonia g brush video but you know they're gonna be in here i'm just gonna disclaimer if you want to see my picks for best brushes of 2018 then please keep on watching if it's your first time here friends my name is alicia and welcome to kinky sweat a platform where i share all things movement and beauty a lot of my movement content is on instagram but i'm looking to film more flexibility and body weight exercise tutorials here on youtube meantime let's talk about these brushes i'm still a little stuffy as you probably could here but my body i mean when you get a cold and your body feels achy all over it's just like and that's how i was feeling when i filmed my skincare video and i wanted to edit that night but it was just like nope and again i'm still a little stuffed so so we still got the tissue box on hand okay i have all my favorites here as well as the award winners and the reason why i have several is because i understand a lot of these brushes are expensive i get it and this is not to say you have to buy this brush or else your makeup's gonna look like crap not at all i also have brushes that are not very expensive and i think they provide a beautiful results but a lot of my award winners are from you know who so let's just get started best foundation brush of 2018 you're gonna take this as a surprise i even surprised myself and lisa eldridge uses this brand and i feel whatever lisa eldridge uses it's just automatic certified bomb okay it's the zoeva 110 face shape brush i use this to apply my foundation whether it's a stick it's a liquid or it's a cream pan i love it because several reasons i am very ill prepared for this video i just saw the light was leaving and i'm like oh you suck right now so i'm gonna put all prices and whatever details i leave out next to me like the price this is a small buffer brush and i feel it's not so small that it's gonna take you forever to apply your foundation but i think it's small enough just to get more detailed on areas that end up looking textured if you apply too much and you can just buff the product into your skin and it'll just looks smooth and airbrush and also because it's a smaller head and handle it's not going to take up a lot of room in your makeup brush holder which is what i usually like to bring on trips <laughs> sparkly and it gets it done you know what i mean sure it might not get it done as fast as a bigger head kabuki brush but you'll still get it done and because it's synthetic it's not going to absorb as much product as a natural hairbrush would I actually use this also for concealer under my eye as well as any spot treatments that i 
tackle on the rest of my face. Now, I'm gonna show this brush because I feel you were expecting this one to win. The Wayne Goss 01 from his Anniversary 2 collection. It's a stippled brush, but the crazy thing about this brush is it's not its fault. It's not its fault. I have very sensitive skin, and sometimes I get a little aggressive with how I punch in the brush, and because of the stippling uh, bristles, it could get a little stabby on me. And again, that's my fault. Because this is more dome-shaped, I feel it's less aggressive if I choose to go in like this. This, I feel I have to do more smoothing action because I go in too punchy. One time, it was so bizarre, I was applying my foundation and my skin just started to react. It felt irritated and I just felt little bumps just kind of rise just in reaction to uh, the bristles of this brush. Now, you know, because I have a full-on review on the Anniversary 2 set from Wang Goss, I absolutely love this brush. I'm not saying it's a terrible brush. Sometimes I do have to be careful with my sensitive skin and how I apply the foundation with my technique this though I feel I can't go wrong I could go in with this brush any type of way and my skin will be fine uh, that's why I wore Zoeva best foundation brush of 2018 you could also use this for concealer Zoeva has a huge collection of brushes that are synthetic and natural hair depending on the design and which one you get you can get a bigger head brush so that foundation applies faster but I just love the size of this because it's not too big and not too small best concealer Concealer, okay. Best concealer brush of 2018. This was weird because I used to use a lot of sponges with my concealer, and the reason people tend to use a sponge is because the moisture from the water leaves the makeup more of a skin-like natural finish, right? Because the moisture helps finesse the makeup in that way. A brush is going to leave more product under your eyes, and if you do have textured under eyes, then yes, a sponge is definitely the best way to go. I've been lazy, and I've been using brushes for under my eyes and currently the one that I just showed is still my Zoeva but if I don't have my Zoeva with me I actually been using two if I don't have my Zoeva with me I use my Morphe G2 now you're like how dare you have a Morphe brush on your channel I'm sorry before I discovered Wade and Sonia I bought a lot of Morphe brushes when I first started getting into makeup and because of the price point they are reasonable and I feel it's a company you can buy from if you're just starting out with the makeup thing okay don't kill me. It's tapered and synthetic and I feel it just fits really nicely under the eye and buffs out the concealer well and leaves it in a smooth skin-like finish. If I don't have this brush, then I'll use, which is another brand I feel is great to buy brushes from because I feel they're also reasonably priced, is the Luxie 120 Detail Round Blender. I actually use this to apply concealer on my lid especially when I just finished carving out under the eyebrow. I think it's perfect to buff out concealer near the inner corner of the eye. I also think it's great to buff out concealer right under the lash line. So if I were to use both brushes, I'll use the Morphe G2 like on the greater under eye area and then I'll go in with the detail blender right under the lash line so the concealer doesn't get too into the lash line and just creates a mess you know what i mean again this is how much the morphe brush costs and this is how much the luxie brush costs i love this little guy and also detail work if you wanted to use concealer for more spot treatment for unevenness or blemishes on your face after you've applied your foundation like around the nose like my nostrils for instance that look red from all the blowing Ooh. in between the brow any blemishes on the jawline on the cheeks you just use this brush and just blends product beautifully it's round it's synthetic and again ideal for cream liquid products i could even use this as a uh, brush to apply my foundation but because of the tapered design i think ideal for under the eye powder you're gonna be upset with me but i don't care this is the best powder brush of 2018 and shout out to michelle wang for showing this brush first before i bought it because her video definitely convinced me to make this purchase the sonia g face one this brush is so sharp and the way it applies loose powder 
loose powder and pressed powder in the most effortless way it looks airbrushed it doesn't look textured it doesn't look overly powdered the way you're allowed to buff the powder on and it does not disrupt the foundation there's no extra swirling going on. You're not going to find any surprises after you're done. It's outstanding. Now, I do remember the price of this brush because it's very expensive. $75. <sighs> but let me tell you something. If you've been searching for a brush that's going to give you airbrushed results with your powder, I'm just saying Beautylish has a three payment plan. If you want to do this in three payments... You could also apply bronzer. You could also use this, which is another step I like to use this for, buffing out the makeup after it's all been applied with the finishing powder. You could probably use this just very lightly, like a loose glow powder on your cheekbones. Even blush if you wanted. It's more multi-use than you think. I do use it specifically for powder setting my foundation, but listen, you could go ham with this brush. The, the possibilities are endless. And again, the soft texture, oh my God, I, I still can't get over it. Every time I use it, it's just like, ugh. The flat top, it just makes it ideal for buffing out product. And again, you're left with immaculate looking skin. This brush will not disappoint you. I know it's expensive. $75 is a lot for one brush, but hold on, just give it a chance give it a chance alicia i refuse i'm not buying that brush well if i may the luxie 520 taper face is a brush that i use before i found sonia i like it it's tapered it's big it's soft i just pat this on or you gently swirl around <laughs> sorry my camera's booming you gently swirl around whether it's your loose powder or it's your pressed powder the so sonia is softer so it's not going to disrupt your makeup like this possibly could if you go in like this i remember one of you had requested to do uh one face like luxurious face brush and the other face not so luxurious I'm gonna do that one day. It's just gonna be very hard for me to, but I'm gonna do it. But to be serious, I really like the Luxie 520. I've used this brush a lot to apply my loose powder and pressed powder to set my foundation. I think you'll like it as well. Bronzer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is why I need my notes. I'm going too fast. I'm forgetting things. Best under eye powder brush, which could also be my concealer brush, but I use it for powder. So. Please don't get upset with me that I awarded a Morphe brush along with this brush, okay? I'm sorry because I don't use this with cream products. I use the Morphe for that. Best under eye powder brush is without a doubt the Wayne Goss number no. two brush, again found in its anniversary two sets. Soft. I mean, this brush is incredibly soft. Under the eye, you could also use this to buff loose powder on the rest of your face. You can use this for highlight. It's a perfectly sized brush for the cheekbone highlight. You could also use this to contour. You could use this to bronze. You could use this for a lot of things, okay? I specifically use it for my under eye and the way it applies my under eye powder. I used to bake too. I don't anymore. I just don't find any use for it. This this picks up more than enough product and the way it presses it into the skin without the under eyes looking dry or textured I believe Wayne said you can use this brush with cream products you can I just like it for my powder and if I were in a pinch I just make sure I don't have it with me I always have a microfiber towel next to me to wipe in between applications because if I want to let's say apply my loose powder first I'll wipe it off go in with my bronzer my blush or my dumb whatever and then go in with the next step you could use this brush for several things ideally I do love it in my current routine to use it for my under eye loose powder application and it is marvelous this is in a set by i believe he has a similar brush sold individually for this price and he also has it in uh maybe it's blue squirrel i'm not too sure but the bristles are brown and not uh white i believe this is goat hair incredibly soft again and i haven't been using another under eye loose powder brush in ages this this it's just been her that's it okay now we go into best bronzer <sighs> This brush, man, I never knew a fan brush could change my life like this one has. And the best bronzing brush for 2018 is the Sonja J Sculpt One. 
You see how how much this has been used. Now let me tell you something about this brush, okay? This is also $75, but hold on. I've encountered problems in the past on days that I decide to apply bronzer and contour that they turn out muddy. And it could be maybe I didn't set my foundation well enough. Maybe I applied too much bronzer, too much contour, who knows? And those days kill me because I hate it. You know when it happens. You get this patch of mud that no matter how much loose powder you use to buff it away, it does not. It stays and it grimaces at you. You're like, oh, me, me, me. well, you know what? With this brush, that will never happen. It will never happen. The way this applies bronzer and some I could get ham with the bronzer okay I just tap it into the pan whether whatever bronzer it is I use that side and I buff it in in a circular motion now despite this being a fan brush I know the first instinct might be to go in like this no 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 you could also go in with circular motions and because of the way it's designed the product is going to stay where you apply it it's not going to go too far down it's not going to go into your lash line it's going to stay right there and man oh man the bronzer looks airbrushed smooth and flawless i don't want to use anything else for bronzer i mean this has really changed the game for me apply it the same way on my forehead under the jawline if you really wanted to just be really careful about it just to the size of your nose with a really light application of bronzer i mean this this brush is outstanding if you wanted to you could really use this also for highlight you could use this to cut under the bronzer with loose powder you can use this to apply your loose powder why not it's big enough and just the this action is just like the best. You could also use this if you're like, I don't know if I want the face one because I don't feel the face one is versatile enough because of the brush design. Get this, because you can use this the same way you could use the face one. And if you're more down with fan brush designs, you could use this to apply your contour with. I mean, in the same exact way. You have so many options because of how the brush is designed. Like, come on. And it's soft. You know how soft this brush is? Because of the softness and Wayne and Sonia brushes are handmade in Japan. 20 artisans per brush, something crazy like that. The craftsmanship shows in the results. And that's all I'm gonna say. Now, if I had to recommend something cheaper, I know, I sound so condescending. If I had to recommend something cheaper, I actually use this brush quite often before I saw Sonia, but I really liked the Luxie 518. This is the special edition Jasmine collab brush. This like looks like, you know, her palettes. It has purple and gold on the handle. I actually really loved this brush bronzer. I did because it's pinched and slightly tapered. I mean, it's not super tapered, but it's not flat either. It's slightly tapered and a little Little dome shaped I feel excellent for applying bronzer like I apply in the same way I do with my Sonia I just get it on one side and then I brush up and because it's very flexible you could push it into your skin and I think you'll get the perfect placement of bronzer this is a special edition brush but I think they still have it on sale and if not the jasmine version I feel they might have like their regular version whether it be the pink handle or like the black handle or you know what better yet I'm gonna put the link down below it's not an affiliate one I just want you to have an easier time navigating finding this brush if it is in fact no longer in stock best blush you know what i'm gonna say but you know what i'm gonna go a different route i'm gonna go a different route and award best blush to another brush because this was in fact an outstanding brush before you know what brush we're talking about when you saw that demo using that brush and how i nearly fainted when I saw how beautifully applied blush on my cheeks. I will award best of 2018 because I have a better award for the other one, the Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush. This is a very uniquely designed brush. It has a slant, so I feel it perfect for applying blush and also it buffs the other powders well so both highlighter and bronzer can combine beautifully with the blush you could also apply bronzer with this i think because of the slanted design it fits into the cheekbone quite nicely and it has like grooves on the handle so i guess it's ergonomically easier to handle i don't know 
It's a beautiful brush, you know what I mean? I'm going to give Smashbox their props, but they've been in the industry for quite some time. They know what they're doing. This is how much it costs. I got it at Macy. It's not as soft as Sonia and Wayne, I'm going to tell you right now. It's like once you use Sonia and Wayne and you use other natural hair brushes, that's, that's shady. I know that's shady, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. This feels like not as soft if you didn't use sonia way you would think this is soft so it's really all about perspective you know what i mean i do think this is an ideal brush to apply blush with again the slanted design just makes it foolproof it really does because once you place the blush it the brush already hugs the cheeks in a way in an ideal way so whatever you do thereafter the blush is going to end up in the right place on your face you know what i mean if you don't want it on the apples of your cheeks then you could start a little higher and i feel again the slanted design makes it foolproof and easy to achieve that as well best highlighting brush of 2018 you know the sonya g sculpt number two i never knew i never knew i actually use this for contour as well the smaller brush head just gives me a little more control than the sculpt one here they are side by side so you can check out the difference of brush size i take the contour paddle to one side and i buff up and it is just flawless it doesn't move too high it doesn't go too low it just stays right where it needs to be even though it's a fan brush and it looks a little more tightly bound than the sculpt one so you might assume it's not going to have as much movement and fluidity like the sculpt one but let me tell you this brush can move it's more tightly packed but it has movement you still can move the bristles in a way that's not gonna feel so compact it's still gonna move the product beautifully across the skin it's not gonna feel stuck like it's definitely gonna make moves you know what i mean that's why i love to use it with highlighter first of all in a more traditional sense you could just pat 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 down your powder highlighter just like so on your cheekbones and the way this applies highlighter i use this with my Givenchy. like it's easy you just you just put it right there like you don't need to do anything else you don't need to do anything else if you insist on applying your powder highlighter in this way you still can make that happen again the bristles are gonna work for you if you insist on applying your highlighter in a buffing circular motion you're gonna be able to do that with a sculpt too again here's the price for this brush if you also wanted to i think beautiful to apply blush with as well i understand if you feel these brushes are expensive but let me tell you something you're not just paying a high price to use this brush for just one way okay the possibilities are really endless and the way these are designed and the craftsmanship that went into these brushes allows for you to have that experience a very elevated one you could also use this to carve out under the bronzer for a sharper line with your loose powder. You could use this also, I think more ideal than the sculpt number one, for to apply your powder contour or even your bronzer on the bridges of the nose. If you're into like that neck carving or whatever, I don't even know what it's called, but if you if you like to go there with your makeup, because I'm not stopping you, perfect to do that with. If you like to highlight your cheekbones, perfect to do that with as well. Your shoulders. I'm gonna stop. You understand. Okay. I don't have well, that's not true. I actually bought this brush because of Nikki Tutorials. She was using this brush for quite some time for her highlight, and I actually use this brush not only for highlight, but just to do refining buffing on my eyeshadow, or just to clean up if the eyeshadow gets crazy. And that is the Inglot number 4SS. This is a really nice brush head, and I feel perfect for highlight, perfect for refined buffing of eyeshadow, perfect for under the eye outstanding for the bridge of the nose again multifunctional this is not as soft as sonia's brush but i think it's a good bang for your buck and again the brush head makes it phenomenal for versatility but if you're looking for a highlighter brush because some people don't like to use fan brushes at all especially when it comes to highlight they want a more tapered brush dome size design so they could apply their highlighter in this way instead of this way you can make it happen with this brush it's small enough that it's going to keep the product right where it needs to stay it's not going to travel too far high too far low now best multi-functional brush of 28 Dang! currently still sold out i'm terrible for even showing this but you know what just get on that notification mailing list okay the wayne goss holiday brush 
for 2018. I'm gonna link the video in a card and also the link down below in the description box so you can see a full-on demo using this brush. <sighs> I've been using this brush for foundation as of late. Now, the reason I gave the foundation award to another brush is because I've been using that one extensively for foundation application before I got the holiday. So I thought it was only fair to give the, the Zoeva the award. But versatility though, you're not even ready. First of all, this applies foundation in a way that I feel foundation should be applied across the board. It's gonna give you a very light application of color so you can use concealer for more spot treatment and covering so your makeup doesn't look heavy and textured on the skin. You're like, how is that possible? It's so flimsy. It's like a palette brush. You just with the liquid. I also use this to buff out my uh, stick foundation from ColourPop worked out just fine you use this to apply your loose powder under the eye all over and this is the most outstanding quality about this brush the way you it just moves across the skin in a circular way it is like heaven it doesn't disturb the makeup it doesn't move your foundation it doesn't move anything it has incredible glide finesse just Overall, the agility of this brush, no words can describe. You could use this to apply bronzer. I did that the other day. I applied it in the same way that I would if I used my Sonia Sculpt 1. I apply a little bit on one side and I buff up in a circular motion. If I wanted to, I wipe this off, go in with my highlighter, put that on. Do, 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 do. And this is why I was struggling deciding if I would award this the blush award, but I felt the blush award was too small of an award for this brush. This I have been using to apply my blush as of late. It just, I mean, it's right there. You see that? You see, hello, you're gonna focus on me? You see how it just hugs the apples of your cheeks? in the most effortless way. If you wanted to go higher, you just move the brush up higher your cheekbone. If you wanted to carve under the bronzer, there you go. If by chance you wanted to pull out your eyeshadow a little more, use the tip of this brush to make that happen. Size of the nose for the contour and the bronzing. Wanted to do it on the temple, whatever, on the forehead, under the jawline. You wanted to use to carve your neck, your collarbones. I'm gonna get like two more of these brushes. I'm not even kidding. I don't need to, but I need to. You understand? This brush has blown my mind every day ever since I used it. I can't get over how high performing this brush is. I was not ready. I knew I would love it. It's Wayne Goss for Christ's sake. I wasn't ready though. I wasn't. It's just, ugh. This is $48, if you can, get two. I think we covered all the face brushes, friends. Let's get into these eyes, man. Best overall blending eye brush for 2018. First, because I purchased Anniversary 2 from Wayne Goss, it was definitely the number three, but then one of you has suggested to get the number 16. So I think they're both similar in shape. They're tapered, and the way these apply my transition color, and the way they just blend out all colors after they've been applied because of the tapered shape it just makes it ideal to pull that shadow out in a way that still yields enough control doesn't get out of hand and it looks professional and these are so incredibly soft and I want to stress the importance of that because when you're applying powder eyeshadow, the bristles are just so immaculate that you don't need to do much. You just apply very light pressure and the brush just does it all for you. In circular motions, it gets the color on there beautifully. Even shadows that are cheaper in quality, this will still make it happen. You could even use this brush if you wanted to to apply under the eye because some people don't love to use powder under the eye but they do need to set right under the lash line you can use this brush for that reason if you want this is a great highlighting brush you can use a highlighting brush it's smaller so you have a little more control if you don't like a lot of highlight but just enough you can use this on the bridge of your nose you can use it to put highlight on the cupid's bow Again, multifunctional across the board. Now you know, you know what my favorite crease brush is for 2018. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Wayne Goss number four. Oh, 
So the number four is from Anniversary 2, and it's named number four because, again, it's in that set. And I'm not sure what the equivalent individual brush is that has the white lettering on the handle. It might be number 20 or number 19. Let me know down below. This brush has really changed my life, man, because I'll tell you why. In my eyeshadow makeup application, the transition application is great. Sometimes it gets a little wild when I apply a medium color or even an intense color on the outer corner of my lid. This brush has just made it so easy and simple for me to apply color on my outer corner. Because I've been struggling with that step for a long time before I found my number four. And because it's tapered, once again, it's going to deposit the color right where you need it to go, but the other bristles are just going to blend it where it needs to be without it getting out of control. It's not going to go too high. It's not going to go too wide. It is just the perfect crease outer V brush. Now, if you have smaller eyes, and I totally get it, he does have smaller taper brushes that I feel will achieve the same result, but with the smaller brush head, especially if you have a smaller eye space to work with. This, I feel feel is perfect for under the lash line because I really love a smoky lash line, you know what I mean? And you just brush it along those lashes and it gives you the most beautifully diffused look without getting too grungy. If you don't want to get too grungy, sometimes I do, but if you don't, I understand. And the way it just sweeps across the crease, I mean, never have I ever experienced eyeshadow application the way I have until I met Wayne Goss brushes and the fact that they elevated my technique I could use now any brush any brush they really changed how up they really changed <sighs> Oh my god, I can't breathe. They really change how I apply eyeshadow and I could just feel the way I apply it, the way I hold the brush, my application technique has all been improved because of Wayne. Thank you, Wayne! I wanted to get the eye set with the holiday brush, but that sold out. And I'm hoping that they sell a holiday brush with the face set because I want the face brushes too from Wayne. I think I might get the eye set first because I love eyeshadow and I think I'll just get more use out of that immediately but listen i want all of them i want all his brushes and the reason i don't have all his brushes because i'm you know i want to work so i can buy them and not be broke after that purchase you know what i mean i do want to show a couple of brushes that i have been loving for the crease as well because you know i have to give sonia a shout out because i love sonia she is so cool and she makes the best brushes i did recently purchase her crease number two with just recently released. I've been using this brush on the outer corner as well. Uh, her Blender Pro, I have been using too. I think this is a beautiful brush for the outer V as well as her Crease Pro. So the Crease Pro is a slightly smaller head, but she was explaining the Crease Pro is going to apply more product at one time because of the smaller brush head. This is going to apply a lighter wash of color, but I think also compared to other brushes, it's still gonna pack a punch still regardless i love this to sweep across my crease i love this under the lash line as well as this brush oh my god these have been so great i love you sonia wayne i love you now her other her worker brushes i wanted to also highlight because these i feel are great for people who are not comfortable with crease brushes the way this is shaped makes it very easy just to apply product on the lid and then you could sweep it across the crease and pull it out a little bit if you wanted to and then you could take the same color eyeshadow and brush it along the lash line and just make a one eyeshadow look and you're done so i wanted to give this a shout out as well the other worker two you could use with cream products so if you rather use a cream shadow you can use that in the same way i did recently get her worker three if you want to see how that brush head looks like against the original hold on hold on oh my god where to go this is the worker three and this is the worker two so this is the difference in brush head size it's slightly smaller than the worker two slightly but this is going to give you a little more control because people with smaller eyes that really couldn't benefit from Worker 2 will benefit definitely from Worker 3. If you want a more cleaner application of shadow under your lash line, Worker 3 I think will be perfect for that. This one was hard because I got a couple. I got a couple, you know what I mean? I want to show you. I have a couple of shaders I want to share. 
I'm still going to award best shader brush to the Zoeva 234. I think this is an ideal shader brush. The shape of it is just perfect. The width of it is great. I find the width extra special because I just find it very easy to apply my lid color with. I also find it very easy to apply uh, outer V, inner V if I wanted to apply first and then blend after. I think it's also great for the inner corner, ideal for under the brow bone, under the lash line if you want a more concentrated placement of color. Now the ones I've been loving as well have been the Worker Pro and Builder Pro from Sonia, okay? Now these are a little thicker and I feel more ideal to blend out with as well as place color down with. I just wanted to mention those but two brushes that I actually really like and sure I could have awarded these for innovation these didn't come out in 2018 neither did the Zoeva the Zoevas came out I believe before but I have to give honorable mention to the Smith 253 and the 256 these arrowhead flat shader brushes I think are beautiful I feel they apply uh, outer corner color very well and because of the pointed shape I feel is great because it already fits into the groove of my crease and it places the color right where I needed to go to blend out thereafter. I love the smaller hour head brush for inner corner because look how just beautifully it fits into that portion of my eye. It gets right there. It also is great for the inner third when I'm placing a matte color there and I just needed to smooth and blend it out. I think the shape is perfect for that placement. Also, lower lash line I think is perfect. You could do a lot with this brush. It moves very well. So after you place the color, you could also blend it out if you wanted to. I think it's great for under the brow bone because again, the point makes it a little more precise for application. These are my favorite Smith brushes and I have quite a fruit few best pencil brush oh man okay 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 i want to show you two but i feel hands down the best pencil brush that i've encountered in 2018 is the wayne goss number no. five again from his anniversary two set the size makes it ideal for inner corner highlight for low lash line intensity even for uh, top lash line intensity, if you want to apply a black shadow there, I think it's perfect for under the brow bone. And it's soft. It's not stabby. If you have very sensitive lash lines, this is an ideal brush to use. I think he has an even softer pencil brush probably in his uh, dyed brush eye set or even in his one of his anniversary uh, total face and eye sets that's even softer than this one. Now the one I picked up from Sonia was the Pencil Pro, but the Pencil Pro brush head is a little bigger, so it's not going to give you as precise of an application as Wayne is going to be, especially if you want that color right up against your lower lash line. I use the Sonia though today to apply my inner core highlight because I like it for it to be a little big in application. If you don't though, then the weight is definitely more ideal. The reason I'm giving this the award is because I've used this extensively ever since I purchased it in the set. And I think it's a beautiful pencil brush. Again, it's soft. It just makes uh, application easy wherever you want it to go on the eye. And I also use this to smudge. Now I want to mention the smudges that I like. Uh, Sonia G Smudger 2. I think is great. I really like it if I don't want to use wing liner and I just want to pull the shadow along my lash line. Now because of the flat design, I feel it's easier to do that with than the pencil brush, but that's just me. That's just an application preference. Depending on how you roll, maybe you like to use the pencil better for that purpose or you like to use a smudger better for that purpose. I think this is also ideal to pull across the lower lash line. You could also use this to apply a very light dusting of color on the lid if you don't like your lids to be super glitzy but you just want a little bit. But practically speaking, like even though this is a smudger brush, I mean, look how smaller the Wayne looks next to it. So this is gonna take take a lot less space in your brush holder if you're trying to consolidate space when traveling. That's the only thing I would think about in deciding which one to get, but we're gonna talk about that after I give you all my award winners, okay? Best silicone applicator goes to the Makeup Forever Professional 224. This is a silicone applicator tip that looks like a traditional eyeshadow 
uh, applicator but it's so cool because it takes those hard to deal with textures and because of the point it just carves along your crease perfectly and it places the color right where you need it to go if there are like starlit glitter diamond powders i want to apply on my lids and i'll use this instead of my fingers you could use fingers as well but if i don't want to use my fingers i'll just use this applicator and just press it along the lid i could also use this to press it along the inner corner because this has like a wide side i don't know if you can see that you can use this side to just apply it right under the lash line whether it's glitter whether it's diamond powder and i think it adds a really beautiful glitzy effect to the lids is that all my friends i don't know i didn't do best wing liner brush because i really don't use wing liner brushes I have been using, if I did want to use a liner pop, the Smith 230, but I really just use a felt pen for liquid liner. I understand that sometimes a pot is going to give you more punch of color, but I'm just so not good at it, so I just rely on a pen to do that with. I'm sorry. I'm going to explain this in this video because we're already talking brushes, so why not? A lot of you had asked, Alicia, which set should I get? Sonia or the Wayne? Keep in mind that Wayne Goss's eye set is basically all crease brushes. All the brushes will look like this in varying sizes, okay? Now, if you're all about the tapered look and the tapered design, you will not have a problem with Wayne's eye set. But keep in mind that Sonia's Pro eye set has a lot more sizes to choose from and to play with. Oh my god, I have so many brushes, help me. The eye set from Sonia has different sizes, okay, and designs. So you got two crease brushes, so if you wanted this to be your all-over transition shade brush, you can use the Blender Pro for that, and the more concentrated placement of color, you could use the Crease Pro for that. But then you have your, what is this? The Builder Pro that you can use for your lid color, and then you can maybe use your Worker Pro to apply lid color, or even lower lash line color and then your pencil to do whatever with if you love shader brushes and you just need more variety in your eye set then yes go with Sonia but if you don't mind using all taper brushes then definitely go with Wayne so he's gonna I think he has also this is a number six in the anniversary too which is a little different from his tapered design so you could probably use this to apply a lid color with it's not gonna be as precise as a packer shader brush would but you're gonna get it on there non the less and that my friends is it for best brushes of 2018 let me know where your favorites have been and i'll be sure to check them out and with that said that's a wrap thank you friends so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another tutorial demo chit chat or review take care and i'll see you again soon